Hello, my name is Derek from Tomcat Cast Training, and this series of videos you're about to undertake is all about gas controls. So, we're going to be looking at all the different types of gas appliances and all the different safety controls what are used on each appliance. The first appliance we're going to be looking at is a gas cooker. So, let's have a look at the controls we can find on a gas cooker. Now there are lots of different um, gas cookers out there on the market. There are freestanding cookers. There are high level grill cookers. There are built in cookers. And there are even just hobs on their own. Well, first thing we're going to look at is if a cooker has a glass lid and what safety device we're looking for to protect this glass lid. Now, the glass lid is basically a decorative part of the cooker, okay? But, <laughs> as the name says, it's made of glass. So, the glass is not shatterproof, okay? So, the heat from the rings could actually shatter the glass. Now then, if the glass is missing or the glass is broken when you go to service a gas cooker and the safety device has not been made inoperative, so basically they're not using a G clamp to keep the, the gas valve open or they've not jammed a piece of wood in there to, um, to make it work, then the appliance needs to be notified to have the lid replaced but if the customer is um, using something to keep the, the safety device open to allow the gas through to the hobs then that would be classed as ID in the unsafe situations procedure IGM G11. So broken, cracked, missing and they're not using a clamp to keep the device open then just advise them to replace it. But if they are using a clamp or a piece of wood or anything like that, then you need to ID because it's making a safety device inoperative. Okay. Now then, what we're going to do now is just show you the test for testing whether this safety device actually turns off on this cooker. Now again, there are quite a few different devices to use to turn the gas off. Um, with a glass lid. One of them is they use a plunger valve so as the, as the gas valve shuts down then what it does is it closes the plunger, well it actually makes the plunger come up and it turns the gas flow off to the, the gas control knobs. There is also a linkage type which will just turn the gas off and then there's another type which will actually turn the gas knobs off. Okay. So there's three different types. This one is a plunger type where it pushes down a plunger uh, to turn the gas on and the plunger comes up to turn the gas off. Now this is how the cooker lid safety device works on this cooker. Basically, it's the plunger. So what happens is, as the lid is lifted, the plunger is pushed down, okay? So what happens is, the gas comes into the bottom of this pipe here from the cooker hose and it can now pass through here where it would take it through to the hob. Now even with this up here the gas will still come through here this bottom port to feed the um, oven and the grill. So this plunger is only affecting this top one and this top one is the only one what's feeding the hob. So basically this just shuts off the gas to the four rings so none of these uh, devices, whether it's this type or the linkage type or the knob type, affect the oven and the grill. They just do the hob. Because that's all it's there to protect. The glass lid being shattered by the hobs. So the way we test it is, pick the smallest ring at the front, okay? And turn it on. So this is my smallest ring at the front. Now, I don't know whether this glass lid works or not, so what I always do, is just turn it down a little bit. Don't want it on full burn because I don't know whether this works. And then I'm going to slowly lower. Okay, we can see it's gone off. Okay. So what I can do now is 
I can turn it on fully, knowing now when I shut the gas lid, it shuts off and I can see it's gone out. Okay, now what I can do is I need to test all of them. Now that gives me the confidence now to turn all four on. Okay, and now dropping the lid down and we can see all four go out. Okay, turn it back on and I can see they're all back on, they're all working and everything's tickety-boo. So the first control, the glass lid, closing the glass lid, that has worked. So that's the first safety device. The next one we're going to look at while we're here, it's a control, not a safety device, it's a control, is the gas apps, the, the gas knobs. They are a control, okay, so they need to be tested. A lot of gas engineers overlook just testing the gas controls or the gas knob. So basically, we turn it on, okay, and it's giving us a good flame picture. We now turn it to minimum, make sure it doesn't go out. Okay, and we can see now that that hasn't gone out. We can now turn it back up and turn it off. Okay, so let's light the back one. We can see it's lit and we can turn it down to minimum. It stays lit. Okay, and we can now turn it off. Do the next one. Turn it down to minimum. Stays lit. Stays on. And to maximum, and to minimum, stays lit, turn it on. So we'd have the oven and the grill to work, but we're going to look at those in a minute. So that's just something as simple as checking whether the gas taps are stiff or not working, not turning off. Okay? Stiff gas tap. Normally what happens is, if the seals have gone on the oven doors, okay, it normally sends the heat up to the gas tap, which then dries out the grease within that gas tap, or it can actually melt the knob itself. So if you go to a cooker and the knob is melted, or it's incredibly stiff, okay, then that's an at-risk situation, okay? Because it might get to a point where it doesn't turn off, and then that would be ID. So stiff gas taps, we need to check them. And if they have got a stiff gas tap, then first of all, look at the seal around the cooker, around the oven, you know, around the door, okay, to see whether we've got heat escaping and melting the knobs. Uh, the next um, safety device I'm going to look at is the thermoelectric device. Now, the oven we've just looked at doesn't have any thermocouples on the, on the actual grill, on the hob itself, sorry. So... The thermoelectric is made up basically of two parts. We've got the thermocouple, um, which has two dissimilar metals with heat um, put together uh, onto those two dissimilar metals. will make about 14 uh, millivolts of electricity, which Thomas Seebeck found out way back. Uh, and what that does is it, it opens an electron magnet. So the Part of the safety device we're checking is the thermocouple lights and stays lit and that's creating that electric to actually keep the thermoelectric open. Okay, so it's basically two controls, two parts for this. Now I just quickly want to show you what the um, gas control knob for the hobs look like if it's got thermoelectric. So this is your thermoelectric device here. This is your thermocouple here. Okay, now this is where the gas main gas comes in. This is where actually your, your gas knob is. So as you push that in, you're overriding the thermoelectric, allowing the gas through here to go through to the burner. Okay, so you push it in, hold it in as it lights, so it allows a small amount of gas to come through. Holds on the thermoelectric via the thermocouple being heated, two dissimilar metals making, I keep going 12 to 18, it's actually 12 to 30 millivolts, but it's very rare you get up to that 30 millivolts. So I just want to show you what a thermoelectric device looks like inside. So I'll just take this brass cover off. This is where 
this end fits onto. So that would go into there to make the electric current. And then this, so when you override the safety device, you push that down. It then makes the electro uh, the electricity which holds it in position. So when you're pressing your knob in, it's overriding the safety device, holding it in that place. So there's not enough electric to suck it, but there is enough to hold it. Okay, so that's basically what it's doing. That would be attached to there. That would make the electric current. You push it by pushing the knob like that. It then pushes the thermoelectric like that, holds it in place, and then allows the gas to come through the burner. And when you twist the knob, there are different ways of doing it. The main two ways of doing it, one is a slot inside the actual barrel. So the more you turn it, the bigger the slot is. Or there is another way where it has two holes, a small hole and a bigger hole. So when you want it on maximum, it's on the big hole. And when you want it on minimum, it's a small hole. So that's a quick look inside what the gas valve is. And you can see as you're pushing that down, I don't know if you can see that, but that's what's overriding. It's banging line with the thermoelectric. And that's as you're pushing that, you can see it's pushing it out. So that's how you override the safety device. It's as simple as that. So I've got to hold the knob down to override the safety control. So I'm, I'm overriding the thermoelectric part, the electron magnet. Now the thermocouples heated up by the gas, it's now made that 14, 18 millivolts of electricity, which is now keeping the magnet open. Now when I blow this out, it has a time to knock off that thermo, um, that electron magnet. So on the old cookers, on the hold hops, hops, it was 90 seconds. It's now 60 seconds for all. Okay, unless the manufacturer tells you anything different. So there are some gas fires which have 180 seconds. So again, if you've got the manufacturer's instructions, it will tell you that time. So normally what you would do is turn it down to minimum and blow it out. I'm going to blow it out on maximum so you can kind of hear the gas coming out. So you can hear that gas coming out. I would now start my stopwatch. And that knocked off in just under 10 seconds. Okay, now I can't hear any gas coming out of there. And if I press the button down and light it, I can see there's it's not passing. Okay, so that is completely shutting off because I can't hear any gas coming out, can't smell any gas coming out, and the igniter's not lighting anything. So we can pretty much say that's correct and works. So we'd have to do that now for all the others. So again, I'll leave it on full rate so you might be able to hear it. Get me watch ready. And again, just under 10 seconds. Okay. Just like the others. That was five seconds. And that was again about five seconds. So I've tested all those. We can see there's no gas coming out. I can hear there's no gas coming out. I can smell there's no gas coming out. So we can say the thermoelectric devices on this hob is, is, are working. The electromagnet is also working and sealing it off. So everything's ticky to bit. Now the next thing we're gonna look at is the actual oven burner in a cooker. Now there are two types of burners. Well, not burners, but the flame uh, supervision devices. There is one which is called a liquid expansion or liquid vapor valve. And one which is worked off the thermoelectrics. 
So the first one we're going to be looking at is the liquid vapour valve. So let's have a look now. Now this cooker has the liquid expansion or the mercury vapour valve in there. So the, the old, really old ones had mercury in, the newer older ones had alcohol in them. So to light the oven what we need to do is we need to press the oven knob in because we're overriding a safety device so we've got to press the knob in and then we can light it. So this oven has to light in low rate. If it lights in high rate that means the liquid um, expansion or the mercury vapour valve is stuck in the open position and that would automat uh, automatically make this oven ID because a safety device is not working. Then it goes up to high fire. So I now know that this burner has lit in low rate. It's expanded the file inside there with the alcohol or the mercury in there, which has now opened a set of bellows and the gas valve and allowed the gas to go in full burn. Now, when we press the button in, we allowed gas through what's called the bypass rate. Now the bypass is actually kind of a pilot light. Um, so when we press the button in, the gas goes down the pilot, that's what lights. Then that heats up the file, which then opens the main gas valve, which allows the gas in. Now I'm gonna test and see whether the bypass is still working. And I'm also gonna test the actual uh, mechanical thermostat in this oven is working correctly as well. So I'm going to close the door. I'm going to close the door now and I'm going to turn the main oven onto slow cook or simmer. And what's going to happen now is the thermostat inside the oven is going to now work and that's also a file which also has alcohol in there, which also um, affects the valve. So it will expand and it will close the gas off to the valve. So it will reduce it back down, should do, to the bypass rate. Now, if it goes out, when it goes down in temperature and shuts off the main burner, that means the bypass is blocked. If it doesn't go down at all, then that tells us the mechanical thermostat's broken. So we're kind of doing three tests in a very short space of time on this oven burner. So let's just wait now for the burner noise to go down so I can tell then that it's gone down to the bypass rate. So let's listen out for that. You can hear it's going quieter and quieter now. So it's nearly there and it now sounds like it's gone off. Okay, so it should, when we open this door, still be lit, but in a very, very low flame. And it is. So that means the liquid vapor valve's working, the bypass is working, the thermostat has taken it down to the bypass rate, I'm just now waiting for it to go back up to full fire again because all the heat's coming out of the oven. And again, that tells me the mechanical thermostat is working correctly. And it's just slowly rising up now from that thermostat. The last check I'm going to do now is I'm going to, now it's in low rate, the burner, I'm going to blow the flame out. And what should happen now is the liquid vapour should cool back into a liquid and then knock off the main gas valve. So we should hear the gas valve try to go into high rate because it'll think uh, the temperature's changed. It will then realize via the vapor, valve, uh, vapor part of it that the, the heat is gone there now and it should knock off the main burner. But the only problem with these is it still leaves the bypass leaking gas out. So it'll knock the main burner off, but the bypass rate will still allow gas through, which is kind of a weird safety device, okay? So kind of a weird flame supervision device, but that's how this works. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna blow the flame out. We're gonna make the burner go up to full rate. 
We're going to hear it click out, but it's still going to put gas out through the bypass. So let's have a go at that. So it's on low rate. Should hear the gas come up. It's now knocked off and it's lit in the bypass rate. It's now gone back up to full burn. So that is the final check for this. Now, the flame supervision device in this oven uh, burner is a, a thermoelectric rather than a liquid vapor. So the tests for that are pretty much the same. So I'm gonna turn it all the way on to maximum. I'm pressing the button in now and you can hear the gas coming out. But this time, the oven lights in high rate rather than low rate, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna turn it down to simmer again, so you can see it's in high rate. I'm gonna turn it down to simmer or slow cook. I need to close the door. So hopefully through the glass now, if it doesn't steam up, which it is doing, we'll see that the burner will go down. Once the burner's gone down, that means it's up to temperature, so that means the mechanical thermostat is working. Then I'm gonna blow out the flame, and it should, on the thermoelectric, knock out, and even when I press the igniter again, it shouldn't relight until I press the button back in. Okay? So let's see if that works. So first of all, we need the flame to go down and then that's going to prove the mechanical thermostat's working. It's just starting to go down there. So as a gas engineer one of the first things you need to do really is find out before you start working on the oven itself is it a liquid vapour, is it an old liquid vapour or is it one of the new thermoelectric ones. So even when a, a, a gas engineer is taking his reassessment or it's a new guy taking his initial assessment, my advice would always be before you start working on that cooker when you're doing your visuals, have a look and see what safety device it, it does have. Does it have thermoelectrics on the hob? Is it a liquid vapour or a thermoelectric? Incredibly important these things. Still not gone all the way down yet, but you can hear the gas has reduced. It's going down now just as the glass clears. Okay, it's nearly gone all the way down now, so I know the mechanical thermostat is working. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna blow it out. Hopefully we're gonna hear this click, and this click has to be within 60 seconds. Once the click has happened, I'm gonna try and light it. It shouldn't light, because the thermoelectric should knock it off completely. So this is being kept alive now by still by the bypass rate but the thermoelectric device is now above the bypass rate unlike the liquid vapour. So here it goes, let's have a go. Yeah, you heard the click. So if I try light it now, it shouldn't light, and it isn't doing. So I know the thermoelectric has knocked off, but we got pretty close, I don't know exactly now, I think it was about 30, 35 seconds. So we were still well in with the 60 seconds. So that's how you test the thermoelectric device on the oven burner. So, by gas rating this oven, and when I gas rate an oven, we always have the door open because we don't want the thermostat affecting when you're gas rating the burner itself. That's the main checks done on this type of burner. Next, we're gonna have a look at the safety devices on grills. Again, two types of grills. This is the high level grill, 
And then we've got the low level grills. So let's have a look at the high level grill first. Now this grill has a thermoelectric device in it. So again, I've got to press the knob in, press the igniter to light it, leave it for a few seconds, let my finger out, and now it's controlled by the gas tap on the front, so I can have it on high, or I can have it on low. Okay, there's no temperature control on this. It's just basically more gas or less gas. But it is, the safety device on this one is actually the thermoelectric device. This high level grill only has ignition. It doesn't have any kind of safety devices whatsoever, but still you control it on high and low by the use of the gas tap on the front. There are no thermostats in this at all. This low level grill is slightly different. The burner is slightly different, but again, there's only ignition down this end. There is no safety devices and the only way of controlling the heat is via this knob. So high and low. So this is a low level one. Now this low level grill is um, same as pretty much the high level grills upstairs on the burner side. So again, there's no thermostat. Again, there's no safety control, just ignition. Again, we're only controlling it by the actual, oh, <laughs> the knob here. So that's high, that's low, don't turn the wrong knob. Okay, but you can hear a fan running on this one. So basically what should happen is when I close the door, the fan should stop. And not that you can see the burner's gone out, but if I open the, the door again, you can see the, the actual uh, gas has gone out, but it started again. Okay, so that's a bit dangerous, but there you go. So this has a safety device to close the gas off because the door's shut, but doesn't actually shut the gas off when you reopen the door. Now that's our video on the controls used for gas cookers. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this video, why not give it a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, then get subscribing. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because we release videos every Wednesday. Next video coming up will be this controls for a fire, so don't miss that one. So all I've got to say uh, is thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and tune in next week for this video on the safety controls for gas fires. Cheers guys.